What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a very interesting Liverpool transfer news video and in this video we will talk about Julian Brandt and very well respected journalist Raphael Honigstein who is a German journalist he, and he said in a report for the ESPN that Liverpool and Borussia Dortmund are the favourites, the two favourites to sign Julian Brandt and because Bayer Leverkusen don't really want to sell to a domestic rival that actually makes Liverpool the most likely destination for Julian Brandt who is just 23 years old and he has been converted from a winger into an attacking midfielder and he has been pretty good for Bayer Leverkusen actually he is Bayer Leverkusen's one of Bayer Leverkusen's best and most important players he scored eight goals already this season in 40 games and he has been in the German national team many times he played 24 times for the German national team Team as well and he won the FIFA Confederations Cup in 2017 which is also very impressive with Germany's and as I said he's only 23 years old and I think he is exactly what Liverpool need but what is even more important than that is that his release clause is just like 25 million euros which is just 20 million pounds and even Rafael Fönigstein says that that is just half of his actual value he is actually actually worth 40 million pounds but Liverpool could get him for 20 million pounds and guys if you enjoy these transfer news videos please leave a like it takes just a second for you it, and it really helps me out and uh, motivates me to make even more videos for you guys and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a future upload. Julian Brandt will have probably a lot of options in the summer a lot of clubs will want uh, him and a lot of clubs will probably trigger the 20 million pound release clause because let's be honest 20 million pounds in today's market that is affordable for even for even uh, like almost all of the Premier League teams uh, almost all of the Spanish teams and half of Bundesliga as well and uh, and other leagues as well so I think uh, there will be a lot of clubs wanting Julian Brandt the big question is what will Julian Brandt want and I think it will factor in to his consideration that Liverpool wanted to buy him before the World Cup but uh, Julian Brandt said or before the Euros I'm not sure but Julian Brandt said that he wants to stay in the Leverkusen squad uh, to fight for his place uh, in Leverkusen and not to hinder his uh, place in the German national team and um, and yeah that worked out for him because in in the end he went to the World Cup it's another story that uh, at the World Cup Germany didn't really do well but now Julian Brandt is ready to take the next step in his career but it's at the moment it's 50-50 uh, whether Julian Brandt will leave or stay and what uh, Rafael Honigstein is saying that uh, Liverpool and Borussia Dortmund are the most likely contenders but there's also a genuine hope from Leverkusen coming from Leverkusen that uh, Havertz who is also a very key player at Leverkusen could stay at the club and also a, a strong improvement in the second half of the season under Peter Bos, their manager ideally maybe culminating in the top four place that's at the moment still in the balance there is still one round to go uh, in the Bundesliga and the Bayer Leverkusen are hoping that that will convince Julian Brandt to stay for one more year at least and he is advised by his father Jürgen Brandt rather than an agent which could help Bayer Leverkusen's cause because maybe his father will say you should stay in Germany instead of moving abroad and given Bundesliga club's preferences for making deals before the transfer window opens properly we should expect a couple of announcements or at the, at the very least uh, some briefings uh, some briefings about uh, where Julian Brandt could end up but if there is radio silence which means if, but if there are no news about Julian Brandt or other big uh, Bundesliga stars that would mean that probably those players will move abroad because the German clubs like to do deals very early on the other hand foreign teams like teams from the Premier League prefer to come in fairly late in the transfer window and with a bank so this is very very 
interesting in my opinion and Julian Brandt for 20 million I think is an absolute bargain he can do everything and because he was a winger before that means that he can play on the wing but as a number 10 he can also play uh, as an attacking midfielder and he can score goals he can uh, get assists and I think Liverpool need a player like Julian Brandt who could get 5 to 10 goals from midfield regularly because if you look at Julian Brandt's career he has always had a knack for goal scoring. He scored uh, 10 goals uh, for example like 4 seasons ago, sorry 3 seasons ago. He scored 4 goals in the next season which is not a lot but then in his breakthrough season just before the World Cup he scored 12 goals for Bayer Leverkusen and that's when uh, Liverpool tried to sign him but in the end Julian Brandt decided to stay in Leverkusen as I said because he wanted to be 100% certain to make the Germany 23 squad for the 2018 FIFA World Cup he was maybe hoping that Germany could win the World Cup again but they, they didn't but still Julian Brandt I think he was very close to moving to Liverpool and now one year later we could come in and be very seriously interested because you remember that Jurgen Klopp actually wanted to take Julian Brandt to Liverpool and it was Julian Brandt who said no that time so this time if Liverpool go back in for him I think that it's there is a very good very high possibility that Julian Brandt will say yes and I don't see why Jurgen Klopp wouldn't go back for a player who is who is a big fan of and also a player who is available for half his market value Julian Brandt is worth 40 million pounds but he's available for as little as 20 million pounds which I think is a brilliant brilliant figure and let me tell you what Jurgen Klopp let me tell you what Jurgen Klopp said after Liverpool reached the Champions League final he said that's exactly the picture we want to draw for the outside world this is Liverpool it's possible here it's possible to make a comeback from 3-0 down against Barcelona in this city with the people around that's the picture that we want to paint about Liverpool a moment like what Liverpool had against Barcelona is worth more than silverware if you struggle in a game they hit the post and the bar but you win it that's good for looking back and saying that year we won it but oh we were lucky it's a nice story but it doesn't help with development the job is to develop as far and as high as possible so it gets more and more likely that you win silverware and that's what we have done so far now we go to the final we will play it learn from the past few years and see what we can do there Sunday is our last Premier League game if we can win it it's not in our hands what we get for that but it doesn't make our season a little bit less good it's just a different finish and Jurgen Klopp said this and I quote him my vision was never a finished article I never thought we have to be here or there because I know football is constantly changing and moving it is all about being stable on the highest possible level that is my wish it's not about what kind of football can we play I am perfectly happy with the big steps we made in different departments of the game we used to struggle in the past with game management and then at the beginning of the season we had moments when we were 1-0 up and it looked like we were calming the game down completely when people wanted more football because they were not used to it but we had to make steps you cannot rest in football never we never we have a really full toolbox with football tools with our help the boys use the right tools in the right moments we have to make an even bigger one for the next few years because nobody sleeps in this business we saw Chelsea and Arsenal reach the Europa League final what's the difference between us 20 points or so even more that's not the difference really but we have been so consistent that's the difference when we face each other it's not 24 it's it's, it's very very little difference it's about a moment here or there but consistency but consistency has made the difference points wise that's what we have to make sure in the future too and Virgil van Dijk also said some very very interesting things after the Barcelona game it's obviously outstanding Virgil van Dijk said amazing a special night we all enjoyed it and I think a day after we enjoyed it as well but obviously we are going back to work and Sunday is going to be a big test for us again the last home game against Wolves we want to show what we have been doing 
all season and get the three points no matter what. Wolves have obviously been outstanding throughout the whole season. Fantastic team, fantastic manager, fantastic season for Wolves. They are guaranteed to finish in seventh place, so it's going to be very hard. I think when we played uh, there at Wolves, it was tough as well. In the Premier League, I think I scored my first goal for Liverpool there. It's going to be hard and everyone can talk about what's going to happen at Brighton and stuff, but we have to focus on our game. We have to try and get the three points no matter what. If we do that, then we will see after the game what's going to happen in Brighton. And I think that's the right attitude, because can you imagine if Liverpool take the eye off the ball a little bit and imagine that we don't concentrate fully and we don't end up winning the game against Wolves and then Man City are leading 1-0 and Brighton score in the last minute and it's a draw and because Liverpool didn't concentrate fully we don't get the Premier League title. That would be such a missed opportunity. So I think Liverpool have to do everything to win that game and Wolves will play with a lot of freedom because they are already in 7th place and if Manchester City win the FA Cup, which they have a very very good chance of doing so against Watford then Wolves will qualify for the Europa League and not Watford. Watford need to beat Man City in the FA Cup final to get Europa League football so it's going to be very very interesting what happens. I'm really hoping that Liverpool will be up for that game because we need to beat Wolves not just uh, for a chance of, of the Premier League but just for personal pride and, and also just to have 97 points in the Premier League that would be an amazing achievement whether Liverpool win the league or not it's an incredible achievement and Mohamed Salah said after the Liverpool-Barcelona game it was unbelievable last season we qualified for the uh, final against Rome away from home so we couldn't enjoy it as much as at Anfield but now we qualified at home so it was unbelievable and we could celebrate with the fans the two times in the final in two years is something really really impressive and unbelievable I hope this season we are going to win it win the Champions League and Salah said that he will be ready for the Wolves games he said I will be ready yes so that's also very very good news and Jose Mourinho said that he wasn't surprised by Liverpool's comeback and that Liverpool knocked out Barcelona. And this is what Jose Mourinho said about the game. Anfield didn't surprise me, Jurgen Klopp didn't surprise me. The relationship with the, between the crowd, the stadium, the players, that empathy, it didn't surprise me. How Barcelona can be surprised by that is my question. You cannot win at Anfield without a very competitive spirit. You know that it's going to happen. Even if you go to Anfield and they are dominant, it's almost impossible at this level that you are dominant for 90 minutes. Barca didn't go there to defend a huge advantage. They didn't go there to be defensive and to wait for Leo Messi or Luis Suarez to score a goal. They were also not the team that thinks we are better than them, we have better players, we are going to score and kill the game. They conceded the goal and they are in, in control until the end of the first half. Then, in the second half, the second goal and, and mentally and even physically Barcelona collapsed. And that's a very very interesting take by Jose Mourinho on what happened to Barcelona at Anfield and I'm just happy that even Jose Mourinho who it's very do well documented Jose Mourinho doesn't like Liverpool and even Jose Mourinho said that uh, he wasn't surprised by Liverpool doing one of the biggest comebacks in Champions League history and I think it's very very interesting and Jurgen Klopp has rubbished the suggestions by Pep Guardiola that expectation is weighing down Manchester City and not Liverpool he said, I didn't feel too easy to be honest, and, but we didn't feel the pressure too much. We decided to see it as an opportunity to win games. About the situation of being in the lead and stuff like that, unfortunately at w I was not too often in the lead in my life that I could talk too much about it. The situation was like it was all respect for Man City for what they have done this season. I don't know who had more pressure or whatever. Both teams delivered and here we are. And I think it's right, uh, Manchester City can't really talk about l being under more pressure than Liverpool because Liverpool have 29 years of pressure on their shoulders. Liverpool haven't won the league title in 29 years. It's very well documented. So I think Manchester City uh, manager Pep Guardiola are talking rubbish about that. And I, I don't think that uh, Liverpool had like... Um, 
less pressure than Manchester City. In fact, I think Liverpool had more pressure than Manchester City and they are having more pressure to win the league because Man City, they are already champions. Liverpool, no, not uh, champions for 29 years. That's a huge, huge pressure in my opinion. Probably Man City had more pressure in the Champions League on the other hand than Liverpool but in the Premier League no chance in my opinion and Graham Sunes said some very interesting predictions about the Champions League final he said this and I quote him for Klopp it will be all about the games in the last few years the final defeats Liverpool have lost three finals already for Pochettino it's all about reminding them about how close they were to uh, actually getting uh, to the final. The last two games that have been at Anfield when Spurs have gone there this season and last season Tottenham were unlucky at both uh, cohesions but Liverpool will win it. They have better players. Simple as that. It's a very bold prediction by Graham Sturridge. I'm not, I'm not sure it's bold but it's like in a final anything can happen and, and Graham Sturridge is right. Tottenham have a real chance because both times when they played at Anfield in the past two years they were very close these were very close games so i think it will be decided by small details but honestly if liverpool play at 100 percent also tottenham play at 100 percent then liverpool should win the champions league final because we have the better players and the better team overall but i'm, I'm still nervous about it because tottenham can beat liverpool they have good players and liverpool can have an off day in a final it happened before it can happen again but Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool must make sure that we prepare right and we learn from the past defeats and the past mistakes that we made in the, in, a, in the finals because then if Liverpool put everything into the final and win it then we will have no regrets. So that's my verdict but let me know what do you think in the comments below and thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this video see you later have a nice day goodbye